Good evening, everyone. You are watching Mario's History Talks. I'm Mario Rostovsky, and we have a terrific show for you this evening. So, we left off last time talking about the arrival of the Turco nomadic Bulgars to Macedonia and how they finally managed to make two distinct races, two distinct people, and two distinct cultures fall under one empire. Now, for today's episode, I actually want to momentarily pause on the dismantling of Bulgar propaganda. Don't worry, we'll pick it right up in the next episode. However, I do want to take some time now to go over some posts I see made on the internet by members of our own community. Now, these posts, they're not only so bad and so wildly inaccurate, they are laughable. And they actually cause innumerable damage to our movement. So I want to point them out to you so you don't make the same mistakes online. And without any further ado, let's get started. All right, this is number 10. So I thought about this and I assume most of my followers are pretty intelligent people. So I'm not actually gonna dignify this with a full on response. This is literally a Photoshop version of an actual Nazi propaganda poster. Here, take a look if you don't believe me. So I don't think you could have found a better way to crap on our entire movement. The same movement that actually fought to defeat the German Nazis and the Bulgar fascists of World War II. So, to whoever made this, was your thought process, and I use that word liberally, was it actually, hey, I really want to show our people in the best light possible as well as honor our heritage, so I'm just going to clean up this Nazi propaganda poster, do so, and I'm going to post it. Honestly, what were you thinking? Delete this immediately. All right, number nine. This one also makes me want to tear the hair out of my head because Macedonians have taken an actual historical person that does support our movement and essentially dragged it through the mud because why not? So this image is supposedly of a supposedly a quote from the former prime minister of the United Kingdom, a man by the name of William Gladstone. Yes, the same Gladstone who famously stated, why not Macedonia for Macedonians as well as Bulgaria for Bulgarians and Serbia for Serbians. So instead of just leaving well enough alone, of course, we had to go on and make it worse. So take a look at this image. It's supposedly a newspaper and tell me what you notice that's a little bit off. No, it's not clearly the modern font with the word never in all caps, something that was not in use in newspapers back then. That's not the issue here. Take a closer look. Take a look at the dates. Did you catch it? This is supposedly a newspaper from 1878 and it has a map of the partition of Macedonia. I mean, come on. And if we zoom in on it, we see Yugoslavia on the map, which didn't even exist in 1918. Guys, come on. This is embarrassing. This is honestly as bad, if not worse, as the Greeks posting the map of Vardarska Banovina as proof that we're not legitimate because they didn't notice on the same map that it omits Serbia, Bosnia, and Slovenia as countries. We're making the same mistake. Think before you post. If you have any doubt about it, just don't post it at all. Okay, number eight. I went into this in greater detail in my video on Homeric Greek. You can check it out down below. But the point still stands. Do not just randomly share unverified random images online. You don't know who created this. You don't know what their qualifications are and how accurate it even is. And as I said, some of the words on the list are found in Homer's work, but they're so corrupted and they're so mutilated in their English spelling, it's actually hard to find them. And many, many more do not show up altogether. So this should be a big red flag. 
But we know that the ancient Paleo-Balkan tribes, they did speak some languages that had an affinity with the Balto-Slavic languages to the north, like Thracian did. And we know some of Homer's work was probably influenced from neighboring languages and dialects. So it's not really unreasonable to assume that some of the words he picked up in his poems were from these neighboring tribes. At the end of the day, folks, you also have to remember, we don't need this. We had folklorists from the University of Michigan who actually came to the Balkans and said that the Macedonians, and among other uh, Slavic-speaking people in the Balkans, they had retained a remarkable degree of continuity of the Homeric oral tradition into the modern era. So again, folks, we don't need this low-quality, questionable Excel spreadsheet to prove anything. Toss it in the waste bin. All right, number seven here. So I don't have too much to say about this idiocy, except that I saw it pop up after Dua Lipa came out in social media as an extremist Albanian nationalist. So, of course, Macedonians online had to further embarrass themselves while rightfully trying to denounce her post. And they posted this beauty. And actually, they thought somehow this will work. So whoever made this, my dude, what world do you live in? In what universe did you think that this crappy MS painted map would be seen as acceptable, historic, and authentic, and that we somehow can argue that all of Albania, Kosovo, parts of Central Greece, and even Serbia are actually rightfully Macedonian? Is this the hill on which you're really willing to die upon, trying to show that Tirana is an ethnic Macedonian city? I mean, come on, the same people that you're using this image against are actually using the exact same methods, manipulations, and tactics as you are. Let that sink in. You are portraying us as no better than those you claim to be fighting against online. And as a general rule of advice, not every map that shows Macedonia is worth posting. Different maps tell different stories and tell and have different biases. If you don't know what you're posting, literally do not post it. You are doing infinitely more damage when you carry on as usual and you don't change your ways. Okay, number six here. I've seen members of our community share this quite a bit. It's an effort to show, uh, again, a distinctive Paleo-Slavic language being used in inscriptions left by the ancient Macedonians in the Middle East. This is actually, uh, this actually appears from the work of Risto Stefov in his book, History of Macedonia from Ancient Times to Present. Further research shows that Stefov is actually referencing the work of the uh, Slovenian researcher by the name of Anthony Ambrožić in his book called Adieu to Brittany, a, trans a transcription and translation of venetic passages. Ambrožić, in turn, is part of the handful of Slovenian authors who posited the theory in the late 80s in the midst of the Yugoslav secessionist movements that the modern day Slovene people are actually not the result of a migratory Slavic people that came to the Balkans, but they're in fact direct descendants and indigenous vis-a-vis -vis the ancient Slavic speaking tribe of the Veneti. And since these Veneti apparently controlled most of Europe and uh, even Asia through the ancient Macedonians who were also apparently of Venetic origin, then there would apparently be relics and traces of their ancient proto-Slavic language. Well, here's why this is not quite the case. For one, the researchers behind the Veneti theory are not historians and they're not linguists. This has been debunked many, many times. They were authors and poets who simply used the Slovenian language to decipher these ancient inscriptions. Inscriptions that were already deciphered. No joke. We've known about these inscriptions for years. This one in particular is an inscription to the Persian-influenced Roman god by the name of Mithras. And it was the Romans, 
not the Macedonians who left this inscription. And it was written in ancient Greek. We know what it says perfectly. It says, God of Mithra built by Zenobios and seated Erobolios, uh, commander of the archers of the second year 990. The year 990 is the year since the founding of Rome, which is circa 753 BC. So this inscription is from 237 AD. The inscription was made by soldiers of Rome. The cult of Mithras was popular in Rome and was especially popular amongst the soldiers. The city of Dura Europus, where this was found, was in the region of Pal Palmyra, and hence a Syrian name Erebolios, a local who became commander of a Roman archer unit. Okay, number five here, folks. Yes, the famous Rosetta Stone translation, the infamous middle portion that remained somehow undeciphered until two Macedonians, engineers by trade, deciphered it using a South Macedonian dialect once and for all. Except, not quite. Again, these two men were not linguists, so first, red flag. Secondly, the whole point of the Rosetta Stone and why it's so valuable historically is that it's the exact same text written three times. We use the Koine Greek as the basis to decipher the hieroglyphics. So, wouldn't it follow to reason that the middle portion of the text also had the exact same text? It should, but it doesn't. Not even close. It's a very, very confusing and esoteric reading that hardly makes any sense with even with the English translation. It's just a lot of words overly repeated and strung together to make a mostly incoherent sentence. Here, take a look. But here's the biggest problem. You see words that have articles on the end. The article mean like the, as in the word detata, the children. Big problem there. Since Macedonians did not have articles at all until about the 14th century. So historically, also, no ancient European languages had any definite articles as well. So the ancestors of the Macedonians surely wouldn't have had them. So again, another red flag. This research is simply not credible. It's not verified by anybody outside, and it falls down on its face with the most basic of facts. Ignore. All right, number four, folks. Um, I've seen this posted a lot online. Supposedly, it's another ancient, uh, it's another relic of the ancient Macedonian language left behind in an inscription. This time, by Justinian I in Syria in a palace called the Palace of Wardan. Apparently, if you look carefully on this inscription, you can clearly see the words uh, Septembri and Noembri, and they are written in perfect Macedonian, and nothing else, can't be anything else. No, just no. This was posted by a Macedonian pseudo-historian by the name of Bastil Chulev, who not only denies the existence of the ancient Greek people as a whole, but he is also a notorious plagiarist from many other researchers, including some of my own work back in 2014. Thanks, Basil. Very cool, my man. But here's why you're actually dead wrong on this. He says that these two months are clearly written in the Macedonian language, despite the fact that, you know, like 95% of Europe also uses the Latin calendar months, but to him, it can only be Macedonian because the S in September is not the classical Greek sigma. He says that's the proof. And even though the N and the I are not the Cyrillic N and I, it doesn't apply to us. It only applies to the Greeks. My God. So, not only are these month names not even native to the Macedonians, in ancient times, they would have been still using the months uh, Hyperberatios and Apelaios um, for September and November, but this text is clearly still in Greek, and he makes no effort to translate the rest because he can't, and it wouldn't even make sense to him. Even with my one semester of ancient Greek back in college, I can still make out the phrase in Septembrio, which, that's written on there, literally means in September in the accusative case. 
literally. It's not that difficult. The only reason you're saying that this is somehow Macedonian is because it doesn't start with the classical Greek sigma, even though you also ignored it's missing the other Macedonian Cyrillic letters and none of the text actually makes any sense to you. Dude, listen, we know the ancient Macedonians had an oral language that was separate from the Greek. It just wasn't transcribed. This is not that uncommon. This inscription is still in Greek. In handwritten Greek during the 4th and 3rd century BC, the epigraphic form of sigma was simplified into the C-like shape, which we also have today. It became the universal standard form of sigma during late antiquity and the Middle Ages. Literally, there are hundreds of inscriptions just like this. Please, do us all a favor and stop publishing. Pop quiz here. Did Macedonians face cultural ethnocide at the hands of the Metaxas regime in Greece and during the Greek struggle for Macedonia? You should know the answer is yes. Do we have photographs of the atrocities committed there? Yes. And last question here. Is the Armenian Genocide or the World War II crimes in, in, the, in Ukraine, is that at all relevant to what happened to the Aegean Macedonians? No? Then why are you posting images from the Armenian Genocide and World War II in Ukraine? I've seen this happen so many times on social media. Some overly excited Nash finds a photo, posts it online thinking he's showing the violence and terror enacted on the Macedonians, and then some Greek or Bulgarian who knows how to actually use a reverse image search finds out that we are actually posting photos from World War II. Hopefully you haven't posted them. Again, think before you post. Figure out where your photos are coming from and then what the context actually is. All right, folks, rounding in number two here. So I actually remember this beauty uh, posted online in response to the government of Macedonia supposedly being too soft on Bulgaria. Valid point. But what did this person post to protest our government being too soft on Bulgaria? Photos of individuals who were fanatically pro-Bulgarian Macedonians. This guy over here, that's Dr. Christo Tatarchev one of the founders of the original Vamoro. Pretty cool, right? Mm, not quite. Among the other things Tatarchev was well known for, he was also a firm believer in the Bulgarian national consciousness of the Macedonians, and this is a view that he carried with him to the grave, which is in modern-day Sofia. And even after an independent Macedonia rose, he didn't change his views. In fact, he was so pro-Bulgarian that not only was he a surgeon for the Bulgar army in World War II, those fascists, but when he saw that the Nazis uh, were actually uh, worried that Bulgaria might pull out of World War II, they actually offered him the position of the presidency of the pro-Bulgarian independent puppet state of Macedonia in 1944. He refused this position, not because of any moral high grounds or the fact that he didn't feel Bulgarian. No, 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 no. He, pulled, he rejected it because he knew the war was not going to be won and the Red Army was rapidly approaching. So, glad you picked this guy to protest our government being too soft on Bulgaria. And this individual, her name is Mara Bunova, a fanatical Macedonian with a Bulgarian consciousness who assassinated a Serbian official in Skopje during the Serbian occupation of Macedonia under direct orders from Vancho Mihailov, the opportunistic gangster-turned-leader of the pro-Bulgarian Vemero after the death of Todor Aleksandrov, whom he probably assassinated. So, she died in the result, but her sacrifice is a rallying cry for the so-called Macedonian Bulgarians of today, both the nearly defunct and dying MPO and the Makedonsky Bulgari in Macedonia. You know, the group of around 50 to 60 overweight, middle-aged men who like to sport cool t-shirts with Voivodi and pretend that they're somehow comedy like the original Vomoro. And here's what they did to commemorate the anniversary of her death.
Again, I am very glad that you picked her to protest our government being too soft on Bulgaria. And I am even more ecstatic that you put them in the same category as Gota Delchev and Cento. Amazing. All right, folks, number one here. I'm going to warn you, I lost a couple of IQ points reading this. So first and foremost, Zeta Macedonia is a cult. And like a cult, it has its sacred beliefs, and these cannot be questioned nor changed with any other evidence. Among other things, this crazy conspiracy claims to research the civilizations and cultures from all five continents, including indicating the existence and the continuity of a Macedonian culture, literacy, and language millennia and millennia back from 400,000 BCE up to the present. That's right, folks. The Neanderthals were Macedonians, apparently. And they'll prove it to you using some crackpot archaeology and linguism to show Macedonian culture and literacy stretching from Macedonia all the way to the United States all across the world. So what do they do? They look for words on these inscriptions that are derivative of the word Ilu, which is somehow the Macedonian sun god, and then twist it and bend it to show that it's actually in written Macedonian. They string together this, these incoherent words and phrases and they pass it off as sentences that make absolutely no sense. And much like the Venetologist, its self-proclaimed leader has actually no archaeological nor linguistic background. He uses modern-day Macedonian to decipher primitive cave scratches, literally cave scratches in rocks all across the world. So, yes, the ancient Neanderthalic Macedonians apparently span from Macedonia all the way to Canada, Spain, India, and even America. The Zeta Macedonia people even call the planet Earth Planet Macedonia because to them, not only are the Macedonians the conquerors of the entire known world, but they literally gave birth to quite, quite literally every civilization out there. And some Zeta nutjobs even call the Caucasian race the Macedonioids. Crazy stuff. I cannot tell you how much this damages our movement. This literally screams to the world, hey, we are people without a history and we're desperately turning to these crazy alternative historical theories to forge our identity. You're literally a couple of MS paint graphics away from going full on Nazi archaeology. Except you, in all your brilliance, managed to change the word Aryan to Macedonian. And that's pretty much it. So to everyone watching, please, I cannot implore you enough, do not share this nonsense. We have, I understand it, we have a huge inferiority complex. We have a bloody history. We have neighbors that deny our history and our identity. I get all that. I am trying to fight that against, I'm trying to fight that as well. But this is not the way to prove ourselves. We have a history. It's glorious to us. But in the grand scheme of things in world history, we really aren't that special. And this is a good thing because once we open our eyes and see that countless other people out there, legitimate people, form their identity from a very messy and confusing history, then we become part of the normal historical process. And that is where the Greeks and the Bulgars lose and fall flat on their face. When they admit that we are a regular people with normal historical process, not this crackpot Zeta Macedonia masters of the world theory that they use to humiliate and pick us apart at every turn. We are better than this. You are better than this. The truth is on our side. I cannot stress this enough. We do not need this. So folks, I know I threw a lot at you and I know I sound quite mad, but I'm just trying to make us look the absolute best and present our movement and our plight in the best possible optics. Research what you post, think before you post, and as always, reach, reach out to others. We are part of a community. We don't need to go at this alone. We are Macedonians. The truth is on our side. It's only when we become unified and educated, like Gota Dolcev said, that we have any semblance of credibility. So folks, 
Next time, we are going to go back to uh, debunking other propaganda. I'm going to let you digest this for a while. Think about what you post. That's all I ask. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll do my best to reply. But in the meantime, keep fighting for Macedonia in the best way possible. Stay safe, and I'm going to see you again soon. Until next time, folks. Golem Pozor.